given uh, so i would like to welcome dr rahul marate who is the founder and director of mitrakira bio solutions he is a scientist in the field of entomology which in which we study the about the insects and around that only we do research uh, other than that he has done many ongoing projects one of his most important discoveries is plastic eating insects plastic is a very big problem in today's life and he has uh, discovered these insects larvas which can uh, which convert it to manure other than that he has also helped indian air force pune i mean indian air force in in reducing the risk of bird hits a lot of time airplanes crash with uh, birds which results in accidents so it has uh, he has helped them reduce by 80% and they are reduced and they are using that in every base station other than that he has also helped drdo in explosive and prop propellant degradation explosive detection using insects is one of one of his more uh, another discovery and uh, now i'd like to uh, yeah one more thing that uh, you can you all can put your questions in the chat box or you can directly ask them once sir is done with his session so now i'd welcome dr rahul sir to address the students and club thank you sir thank you prashant thank you ma'am thank you symbiosis uh, management for uh, allowing me to share uh, my views about insects so the first thing which comes to the mind is when you see an insect you need you feel like killing it but uh, when i see an insect i feel loving it because it's giving us a lot of options uh, i call it as a biomimicry and uh, so presently uh, i just heard about so many uh, institutes have come together and uh, just except for the life science uh, no other institute is connected directly with the insect <laughs> but uh, now i'll uh, connect all the institutes together with insects so that's going to be a fun for you and uh, then you know uh, there are so many projects which will, uh, you would think of taking it ahead and uh, you may think of um, so many other ideas and uh, it could be a startup idea it could be so uh, i mean let's see how to explore all these possibilities right so i'll just share a presentation so uh, today we'll be just uh, talking about the uh, fascinating world of insects and i'll be taking you uh, through the entire world uh, where uh, these guys are known to be very you know very specific about doing their job and if you can uh, compare like ma'am was saying ki uh, we think we are the uh, superior uh, on this planet but um, i feel insects are much more superior so if i have to compare uh, the total biodiversity we'll say uh, of the total biodiversity on this planet 70% are insects so that's a huge amount and uh, this entire 70% is neglected so you can imagine uh, how much yet is to be explored and uh, how we can get connected to them so there's a small you know, first uh, video i mean audio so there were two mosquitoes talking and they were saying something so it was a, uh, so it was a dad and a uh, kid mosquito and uh, they were saying something so were you able to hear that yes sir yes sir it's audible you are audible yeah so just now there was a buzz about two mosquitoes they were talking to each other and uh, if i say that uh, i could decode the language of a mosquito and uh, i can uh, un understand what they are saying so the dad was saying uh, he was asking his son that uh, how was your first flight and this guy was saying okay everyone was clapping for me so <laughs> that was uh the thing so what i am doing is uh, i am uh, also learning language of mosquitoes so why am i learning the uh, language of mosquitoes because everyone knows ki the most deadliest thing on this planet is the dengue because the major casualty happens uh because of the dengue i'm not worried about corona but i'm much more worried about the dengue which will come in uh, future in uh, next uh, few months so uh, corona is nothing but uh, dengue is the deadliest on this planet 
so we we have to uh, worry about uh, mosquitoes uh, which will be coming ahead because that's the mosquito called aedes which uh, is going to transmit this and aedes is a day biter so uh, we need to understand what mosquitoes are so and i can say that mosquitoes have 96 odor sensors right so that's the beauty in this small insect small um, uh, mosquito you get more than 96 uh, odor sensors so you can imagine if i have to put uh, uh, so uh, if i ask you what is a sensor so you show me a big uh, piece of uh, electronic gadget which is called as a sensor now if i say you put all together 96 sensors together so what would be the size of your device so it could be more than an feet you will show me one big pcb you need to connect everything and the entire device will be such a big box but my mosquito has only small string which is less than an mm and that has 96 odor sensors put together so that's the beauty of uh, these mosquitoes or the insects and uh, that that's where you know you get a good uh, amount of understanding and uh, how uh, micro sensors or how small things can be made so then you have a nanotechnology which is coming up so how to integrate this nanotechnology so people who are into vlc or embedded technologies uh, how they can prepare their uh, uh, designing about uh, preparing a particular sensor or a particular chip so ideally a uh, chip design can mimic the designs from or uh, the uh, you know all all the sensors put together inside an insect so that's the beauty of this entire uh, insect world now uh, just for curiosity uh, the uh, few people would say ki we get mosquito bites and few would say that we don't get bites you know why because there are certain people who would give out a particular um, scent and uh, these mosquitoes are you know they get uh, attracted to that particular scent so even if you have two people uh, sleeping next to each other and uh, one fellow is uh, uh, would be i mean the mosquitoes would really um, uh, uh, you know really uh, go behind them the other one would be sleeping peacefully so what actually happens is a mosquito right from see more than uh, 10 to 50 meters he can sense you so he'll first check out for the uh, co2 that's a carbon dioxide which we give out so then the next it will he'll come close that's the first time the mosquitoes will see a human so that's the thermal image uh, the um, particularly he'll see a, a human from say 10 meters and then less than 20 cm when he goes close by he can see the thermal plume so that's a typical uh, character where it can sense so here itself we will see three sensors are working together and uh, this uh, gives a particular uh, you know uh, 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 you know the place where uh, the mosquito can be uh, rather mosquito gets attracted for towards the humans now there's a something called mosquito management so what i'm trying to understand is the language of a mosquito and whether i can use the technique what very old story of a pied piper did so i can replay that and uh, i can first is like replay it i can understand the language and then call the mosquitoes either i can call or i can shoo them out so this is going to be the future trend of uh, mosquito management because you are you know uh, even if you use a lot of chemicals they are resistant to that and uh, then you have a, then there is uh, nothing left to control the mosquitoes so now these technologies are going to happen and uh, you need artificial artificial intelligence you need uh, machine learning so we are already doing all these projects um, and um, so i am trying to uh, figure out that what is the best possible uh, language so i have figured out more than 16 different types of languages mosquito speaks so like uh, what we speak i speak hindi i speak english i speak uh, marathi so uh, other than those three languages finished but these guys speak more than 16 languages so <laughs> that's how these guys are uh, you know much more intelligent than us uh, then uh, something about the honey bees 
so everyone is uh, fascinated about honeybees and uh, so honeybees uh, total uh, uh, put together the uh, mathematician and in engineering and economist everything so we can learn so many things from a only single honeybee so because uh, this is much more connected to us because of honey uh, medicinal properties and so on but uh, there are equally uh, similar so many other insects which uh, do um, similar kind of an activity so i would say this is the oldest mathematician because uh, the honeybees have come much much before humans have stepped on this planet so during that time they knew what the mathematics is because they would prepare this hexagon a uh, precise engineering model and uh, so i'll tell you now what the mathematics is behind uh, or what is the science behind preparing the hexagons why have they chosen to have hexagon and not any other shape so there's a polygon which interior angles must be divided into 360 Right, so regular triangle works with 360 divided by 60. That is six squares put together. So you can see over here the entire mathematics, and um, so they have just figured out that what is the best combination I can use uh, to have my hive very stable as well as I can store a lot of honey in it. Also, I can have my own house. So the um, honeycomb is a typical house for a honey bee. so uh, uh, in this way then many other insects have this kind of uh, engineering this kind of a uh, civil engineering um, a lot of mathematics is involved so they do a lot of mathematics in um, understanding or building their house so what we also do so i cannot do my own job so i have to hire a architect i have to hire a civil engineer i have to hire so many people so uh, but honey bee is doing this job in one go and she doesn't or honeybee is not going to hire any cockroach to do the work for him so nor they are going to hire anyone else but honeybees do their job that means you can see the intelligence build in these honeybees so similarly there are so many other insects which build uh, for example a potter wasp so potter wasp builds her own house that's a typical pot so what's the engineering what's the civil engineering behind it how does it manages to find out the curve how does it manage to have the uh, pot so like uh, if you see a potter he would like have a wheel and then he would plat on the mud and then he'll start preparing the pot but if i decide tomorrow to prepare a pot i won't be able to do it because i don't know the technique but these guys know everything so that's the beauty and uh, they can build they do not forget their own house uh, if i have to find any new place i will totally rely on googly baba so that's a google but uh, these guys have their own orientation so they could find their own way in this whole big world so they know how to reach their house they know how to go and find the food so precisely that's the language of a honey bee uh, so she comes and tells the other members that uh, that's a typical dance they will do and she'll tell others that okay from here with reference to the sun the food is available at 90 degrees so food is available at 140 degrees or whatever the degrees are so uh, these guys would work uh, sunrise to sunset and uh, because of the based on the orientation of the sun these guys tell us or they tell the hive members the where the food source is and uh, so uh, you can see uh, and their honey bees also display a good uh, sign of social behavior because the queen takes care of the entire hive so thousands and thousands and thousands of um, uh, bees uh, are staying together and one single queen is you know uh, managing them so that's a beautiful uh, way of understanding how management is done right so uh, management students can learn a lot of uh, things from uh, honey bees they can learn from uh, termites they can learn from many other insects about management marketing students can learn a lot of things from butterflies so like this you know there are so many things we uh, uh, you know uh, try to understand how nature works and that's a typical biomimicry which we can understand and can implement in our day to day lives so uh, this is one uh, thing what uh, a honey bee does so it will go and collect a lot of pollens in that she'll do the pollination but my one more uh, concept what i am doing one project is called as ento vectoring so this is something i am telling a honey bee to carry the microbes drop it on a flower or a plant so that the pest on the plant will go and the honey bee does pollination she comes back 
So the honeybee is now going to do the job of pollination, of bringing the pollens, prepare the honey, and also an additional job of uh, you know uh, sending the microbes to the plants for pest management. So that's a total new dimension, probably one of its kind in India, which I'm doing. And uh, this is how the honeybees would be doing the job for us for pest management. So it's a very good alternative for pesticides. So we don't require any pesticides henceforth. So you can just go on releasing honeybees. So they are going to do the job of a postman. So just to deliver and come back. So there's a fantastic way we could uh, really uh, make use of uh, the technologies or make use of these insects without you know damaging or harming the nature or imbalancing the nature and so on so uh, how much honey to or in which uh, place i can store honey well or so this gives an idea about uh, how should be our storage system so there is a patent filed by one of the companies under the name of a hexacell technology because this hexagon tells or uh, gives us a fair idea of uh, the maximum coverage or maximum area to be uh, occupied or the space uh, could be used for stacking. So that is also one good uh, example. Uh, so uh, we can store uh, for, uh, for honeybee it is a storage, but for occupy maximum uh, storage and uh, well, yeah, and you can keep uh, in you know warehouses so in warehouses also you can use these technologies so that's the beauty then there's something interesting that uh, what we see and what a honeybee sees honeybee, uh, you know, for a white color flower what we see honeybee sees it in blue that's a very interesting part so if i have to call honeybee so what kind of flowers i should have in my garden so uh, if i plant white color so honeybees can see blue and they would come and uh, you know they would come and uh, do the pollination so for humans uh, we see yellow they would see white and red so what humans see is violet they see green so this is a fantastic and very interesting uh, what a honeybee sees and what we see um, honeybees are also explored find out the um, explosives and uh, so this concept was uh, a bit old but uh, nevertheless it didn't go much further um, in uh, other countries because uh, they have limitations for the temperature control of the honeybees for us it is really good and uh, i've been exploring uh, honeybees and other insects for detection of um, uh, explosives in our drdo so i've been doing this project for almost a year and uh, we are getting a very good success on that and uh, slowly maybe in next march by next march we'll be in position to come out with an that's called as an ed key that's a explosive detection device or a kit and uh, so we are, we'll be doing a lot of activities with um, bomb disposals and you know airport scenarios and a lot of things so where we can very uh, easily find out uh, the explosives two parts per trillion so that's very interesting so presently, the whatever the present technologies are, they are not able to go beyond certain limit uh, because of the technologies. But uh, my insects can do wonders. So here is something very interesting. There is a small, uh, uh, you know, it's a, called as a maggot. So normally you will find this maggot in uh, uh, any uh, dustbins or you know uh, garbage areas. So they do have small eyes, less than a 3 mm, and the total size is less than 10 mm. For a small megard, you can imagine a guava, or sorry, a guava or a fruit. If you cut a fruit, you will find a, some, you know, these uh, crawly creepies coming out of it, and the white color ones. So that's the smallest eye you can see, and uh, this eye does a fantastic job of uh, showing them the way. So can I have, can I prepare similar kind of a eye or an artificial eye or kind of a lens which can take me through the entire fruit or anywhere to find out. So the idea is presently there's a big issue of, uh, uh, you know, to find out the sewer lines, the so cleaning of sewer lines. 
so we don't get uh, people to go down because now because no one is so comfortable in going down the sewer lines and trying to find where the drainage has been choked or blocked and what is there so can we have some kind of a uh, alternative or a bee or a wasp or something or a small entomocopter that's called as an entomocopter i, I call it as a uh, not a helicopter but an uh, insect helicopter so which has a similar eyes and uh, the, uh, the, the image is being transmitted to us and we know where the drainage is being choked and we can very precisely go and do the repairs otherwise it's a huge task and a very difficult task to go and clean the drain lines so can our uh, entomo vectors go and uh, entomo copters go inside uh, the drains where you don't need to send a human so similarly you can use it in the uh, you know the mines to find out uh, any other activities what is going on below the mines so you can you, you can you know save a human life uh, using this kind of a concept building some small artificial uh, small toys actually i call it as a toys so we can have some kind of a toys which uh, can do a job for us so we don't actually uh, harm any insect but we mimic that insect uh, if i have to uh, build and uh, you know the insect have uh, compound eyes and simple eyes so there are two different kinds so out of which the compound eyes are the eyes which have uh, so 100 uh, eyes put together builds one eye of an insect so you can imagine 100 digital cameras put together so that's one eye of an insect if i have to have a similar eye in humans you can imagine i need to have 1 meter big round which is uh, equal to uh, insect eye, a compound eye, a compound eye of an insect. So <laughs> that's how it is. it is. So here you can see the simple eye that is uh, normally we have or our vertebrates will have. So it's just a lens and a receptor, the light falls on the lens and we can receive. Then you have simple corneal eyes where the, uh, the, eye, uh, the second one is the eye of a spider. Right, and the third one is the eye of an insect. You can see so many put together. So you have a big array of uh, eyes put together, and that makes them, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they can really uh, 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 capture a lot of information, up, up almost 360 degrees. Uh, apart from honeybees, there were some people who have tried about grasshoppers. So this is a big pest for us, but uh, nevertheless can be used also in uh, finding explosives. And uh, now similar thing, if I can make use of this insect, instead of explosive, I can use him to find out a pest. So I can have something called as an early warning system for the pest. So I can use this in agriculture where the people can, you know, uh, the farmers can predict early uh, pest attacks so they can save their crop. So similar kind of a uh, system we can use um, uh, to find out uh, the uh, you know pest attacks uh, scenarios uh, much much early by using artificial intelligence and machine learning designs. Also, the people uh, from the uh, culinary division, I can say that we can have India's first cricket burger also. Then what can we, you know, we need to understand uh, this is like, uh, there's, a, there's an insect called as a whirly geek beetle. So this is that uh, whirly geek or water beetle. So that has a beautiful way it goes, dives down. And if we really understand or study how it dives and what it actually does, so our divers can perform much better. So presently, if you see there, uh, there's not a single Indian diver or a national swimmer. Uh, we're getting any uh, medals in our Olympics, but uh, if we really work hard on this to find out how we can improvise on our diving or the swimming skills using a mimicry of insects, because uh, many times of uh, mimicry is used by dolphins or fish mimicries, but um, in insects also they are performing much better. Um, Presently uh, in Pune or mostly metros, you'll find they are doing a lot of job of uh, preparing tunnels for the metros. So this entire understanding was uh, based on this small uh, mole cricket. 
so the biomimicry is about the mole cricket how it digs below the hard surfaces also so that's very interesting and fascinating that the entire huge technology of preparing a tunnel below the ground is based on this small cricket it's called as a mole cricket but the front leg modified for digging so uh, that's the beauty even if the soil is hard where we cannot dig it so easily this guy can, this guy can dig it very easily and within few seconds he will go below, below the soil and uh, so that gives uh, you know uh, 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 you can really uh, understand or uh, uh, you can prepare some some kind of a device similar uh, in action which can dig below the soil as i um, uh, was mentioning that bird head problem so we did very successfully in indian air force indian navy indian coast guard so wherever we have air base we have uh, we have done this so the beauty is one small 1 mm uh, fly can take care of this entire big airplane so you can imagine <laughs> the uh, how it is done so i i release this uh, hardly 1 mm wasp which goes and infects the caterpillars or the butterflies or the food base which is present so naturally it uh, controls the food um, uh, you know supply which uh, the food it cuts down the food supply that's where the birds don't come and the big birds don't come because there is no small birds so automatically what happens is the small birds start migrating because of the scarcity of food and i create a natural care of scarcity because i don't you know we don't intervene uh, by using any other uh, methods so we use all biological methods so that's how we were very successful in going ahead with this and without damaging or without imbalancing any environment we could uh, really get a good hold on the reduction of bird population ultimately reducing the bird hits so you can imagine if a bird hits this one particular fighter so what is the loss so now they have invited me to take care of the rafels <laughs> so that's my next job uh so this is uh, insects also do a lot of wonderful job as i told ki uh, uh, this is a explosive and you can see the small uh, caterpillar i mean it's a larva which is going inside and eating or crumpling all the explosive and uh, now the beauty is they can recover most of the explosives uh, and then they can save their uh, you know the rockets because earlier they used to um, it was harmful also for humans to uh, do the explosive i mean to uh, degrade them but uh, now this is a good option they have found out we did one study now they are going ahead with uh, much much uh, larger quantities uh, you must have known this insect that's called a dung beetle uh, it's known to take care of the entire dung pads which are uh, fallen on this so the say half digested material is fully converted by these guys and uh, the the uh, the strength what these guys have is equal to the strength of an hercules so it, it, that's what it is said that it can really push this uh, ball of dung and uh, without seeing where it is going but just with the orientation of the moon it can take this entire ball towards its origin or towards its destination so that's something very interesting about these insects so what is the way or how it can push this entire ball if similar kind of a um, uh, earthen earthen ball if uh, i tell you to push it is very difficult for you physically to push that ball it could be more than 100 times more than your capacity uh, this is one beautiful picture of a butterfly wing uh, which is being blown 3000 times magnification so this is just one scale of a butterfly you can see beautiful arrangement of the scale and uh, when the sun rays fall on it because of the reflections you see the beautiful colors on these uh, butterflies so you can see the typical rib kind of an arrangement inside a single scale and uh, this has been blown magnified to 15000 times so that's what a particular butterfly is when so when you see a butterfly if it changes its uh, when it's uh, resting uh, so at one angle if we see that uh, butterfly uh, slightly if the butterfly changes its uh, resting position 
So you'll see there is a difference in color because of the reflections. And reflections happen when the light falls on these ribs. And the ribs are inside, present inside the scales. So then now for the fashion industry, can we have something uh, similar kind of a design for the robes which you have? And they, they can present the robes, uh, the, the future, uh, you know, the designs based on these kind of uh, uh, ideas where uh, it could be a unique one and the fashion industry can really go in glamours because of this. This is a beautiful, uh, you know, what uh, pigment can do or uh, how the beauty of uh, insects is or the nature's beauty at its best. Uh, here you can see a lot of beetles and a lot of color combinations. So a lot of designs and that's fascinating. So a lot of, I mean, why this happens because the insects would eat uh, certain uh, pigments and uh, that gives rise to these colors. You can see these are all tortoise beetles. So beautiful uh, insects. Of course, looking at them, of course, now henceforth, probably we won't feel like killing them if they enter our rooms or... <laughs> So, so next time if you see an insect, please don't kill him. You can throw him outside. So this is when uh, a moth, so there's a difference in the moth and a butterfly. So when you see a butterfly, you'll see a butterfly uh, with its wings open, uh, sorry, wings with, uh, with closed wings and a moth is the one which will see uh, rest with its wings open. So this is a typical moth and you can see the antenna of a moth and uh, that's how it will try to find his way in at night and uh, so you can imagine our defense systems have come out with a radar to find out uh, the enemy positions but this guy can do the same job with a very small antenna equally stronger than whatever radars we have present so they can track a few kilometers so these guys are much better with the small session, with a small size they can track for kilometers. This is an antenna and you can see uh, this is a uh, scanning electron microwave of an antenna. So these are the pits and the bristles which have come out. They do the job of uh, getting whatever is available information, decode it and then go ahead. So this is again one more uh, it's a moth antenna, earlier it was a bee antenna, this is a moth antenna. So we can see there are a couple of different, different patterns on its uh, antenna which do the job of getting information. Uh, so there's some interesting uh, information that if you sweat a mosquito, they may learn to avoid your scent. So <laughs> this is something very interesting uh, science which has come up that uh, there's a learning process in insects also. So as we learn a lot of things, so insects also do learn a lot of things. So they, uh, they also have DNA in them. So these guys are equally intelligent and they know what and when to do all these things. So that's how now insects are also becoming more intelligent, staying with us. So here uh, I can, I'll just make you aware of what is acoustics. There's some kind of a cicada which makes this kind of a noise. We can have one more. So this cicada was, uh, you know, it mimics the sound of an aircraft, you know. <laughs> so it has a very different kind of an approach or the acoustics. So like this, you'll find a lot of insects having uh, different, different, this is orchestra. So the, who are the people who are into dramatics and music? So it's a, <laughs> you can see a beautiful orchestra of these insects.
So now hostel nights on the campus can uh, also listen to this orchestra at night because this is the time you are going to uh, see the orchestra or hear the orchestra at night. And uh, that's going to be really interesting uh, because your campus is a uh, beautiful campus. I've been to your campus a couple of times and I've done the survey for insects also there. And I found a beautiful diversity of insects at your campus, uh, lovely campus especially. So this is something interesting about the acoustics. Now, I'll just uh, quickly take you around with the mosquito gossip. So here there are two species. One is the Aedes, which gives, uh, transmits dengue. Second is the Culex, which is a nuisance species. Uh, during evening times, uh, this Culex is going to bother you much more. And uh, so here is a single male. And this is a single male of a Culex. Right, so now here's a single female of a Aedes. Now there's a single uh, female of Culex. Now we have all males put together. So I can imagine a school with all kids, uh, you know, a typical free period in uh, the kids are going to have so the noise which they'll make. So these are all males and all females. You can imagine what is going to happen. So it's big chaos. So uh, of course, they, uh, these are all uh, uh, recordings from a mosquito. So uh, different different mosquitoes we tried, and that's the uh, different languages you can hear. And uh, so what they speak is uh, a really challenging job which we are doing. So now just something interesting that uh, grasshopper also has a ear like what we have, and that is also present on the uh, leg region. So now you can imagine the ear on the leg of a grasshopper. So they make a, uh, so that's why they can very clearly uh, hear uh, from a very long distances. So this is one uh, insect called as a cicada. So normally during uh, summers in your campus, you hear the big uh, noise of the cicadas. So the, uh, you can hear them for kilometers and for a long duration because uh, they'll keep on making noise. And uh, because you can see this very small device on their body, the white one, it acts as a beautiful amplifier. So you can see the smallest amplifier these guys are having, right? So if you see a regular amplifier, it's a huge one device. Like we have a mic system, audio system, audio visual system. You can imagine a big um, uh, amplifier kept on the desk, but this guy has an inbuilt amplifier. So this uh, makes uh, a huge noise and you can hear from kilometers. Now I have something called termites, which is very common to us, but uh, in Australia, these guys make use of these termites because uh, termites are known to uh, uh, take inside their body the metals which are not required. So in New Zealand, uh, sorry, in Australia, these guys would uh, go behind the termites, they will scan them and try to find the gold. So they will do the gold mining uh, inside, uh, I mean they, they can go for the mining. So, uh, so this is the total non-invasive method, no devices required. So they will just um, understand what the uh, termites are doing and based on which they can find out where the gold supplies are below the soil. Artificial networks, neural networks, and so on. So a lot of uh, techniques are now coming up based on the, um, you know, uh, insects. 
and uh, these are the latest trends which are coming and lot of computational intelligence राहुल सर यू कैन म्यूट यूर सेल्फ तो और वो आवाज कौन सा आ रहा है देखो बाल आवाज़ आ रहा है और चैट बॉक्स बंद कर दो या या सॉरी अबाउट दिस बैक सो लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स नाउ आर बीइंग स्टडीड बेस्ड ऑन द इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम इंसेक्ट्स and a uh, lot of logarithms or a uh, lot of networks in present day it's called as a uh, something called swarm intelligence which has been used to find out the crowding uh, complex uh, you know they can you can solve uh, complex uh, problems by this locus locus search as called ls so a lot of log- uh, algorithms being designed on basis of basis of these insects uh, so what happens with honey bees it can 190 times per second it can beat its wings so you can see the, the machine that this is supposed to be the fastest machine which is doing this job so a lot of things you know they are trying to understand so in deserts you will find uh, the beetle works of condensing the um, uh, air and uh, preparing water so whatever present technologies if you find in the desert they will have big harvesting units where uh, they collect water so the entire idea was uh, used by from this insect uh physics and engineering put together or uh, studied from ants so you'll find the defense guys will be using uh, this kind of a quick assembly of a bridge very quickly how can you assemble the bridge and it's called as a self assembly behavior so there's a logic which is built and uh, so the bridges which are built by uh, the defense or bridges which are built by the local um, you know the hanging bridges and all so the entire technology is uh, based on the logic or the engineering based on the ants so in zimbabwe we have one entire shopping center which is built based on the termite mound so this is very interesting and uh, there's a lot of savings being done because of the uh, ventilation uh, technologies been used or mimicked from the termite mounds that has uh, really it's a fascinating thing you can build an entire shopping center i don't know so in india do we have these kind of things so we have or the um, uh, airports because uh, you know we cannot uh, uh, 
you know there is a lot of crowding presently i mean uh, now post covid now every uh, flights will start everywhere so it is suppose that hitro airport is the crowdest airport so how to manage without you know have, having any accidents between the airplanes Uh, we did one uh, wonderful uh, part over here is uh, using insects to convert the hazardous paint to waste. So that's a successful uh, project we did in uh, Bajaj Auto Limited, and uh, we could convert uh, acceptable fertilizer grade, um, uh, you know, fertilizer grade uh, uh, manure. So that was the biggest achievement which we could do using insects. also now we'll just very quickly touch upon the other side of the uh, uh, insect uh, insect world that is the dangers which we are having presently so the pesticide effect everyone knows the cell phone radiations have really uh, marked on the the decline of the populations and then there was one uh, you know article in the new york times magazine on insect apocalypse that if insects uh, will uh, move from here then what's the next because uh, and india is still you know uh, uh, very infant in all these studies and uh, whatever the data was published globally there was no survey from india where uh, they could use in the study because nothing has been done and we are still infant in all these studies and uh, that's the really sad part for us uh, because of lot of uh, you know insect turbulence in the pest management so very recent this uh, uh, yavatmal thing had happened uh, because they were not able to control the uh, pest populations and uh, they had, they went in lot of cocktails and uh, that was the sad story uh, climate change everyone talks about this is now really uh, taking a toll on insects also because they are getting much more hungry than earlier times and they are uh, causing more crop losses so this is one very uh, alarming situation for us and we need to really uh, think on those lines because if they start becoming hungry so then we will be hungry because they will eat everything what our food is and then we will try to pour lot of pesticide and that is going to come in the system and total imbalance is going to happen so what's declining the is causing a sharp decline in insects and it why is it a big uh, you know concern and matter to understand the diversity of insects Uh, because there's a lot of decline which they have seen uh, on other side we are seeing a lot of good uh, population of insects but it's not the only uh, place we are, or a small place we need to understand it's uh, it should be a pan india or should be a global studies which are, which need to be integrated together see there was one uh, un guys have already given a sharp uh, warning that indian farmers are going to go in a hell because of this uh, fall army worm pest which is very recently entered india a couple of years back and uh, now uh, they are coming out with uh, now they have a real problem because uh, nothing can stop them at a present because of the uh, they are becoming uh, as an uh, invasive species so there is a concept called as invasive species also and uh, so here we have insect apocalypse where now it is sounding that the no, freshwater arthropods are coming up than the terrestrial ones because the terrestrial ones are getting uh, declined first as compared to the aquatic ones uh, very recently we had uh, something about this locust guy who had entered india and uh, we had so many uh, videos running here and there because they have entered mumbai they have entered dadar they have entered this they have entered that place entered in madhya pradesh entered nagpur entered the but i don't know how many have physically seen these locust so locust is something which is a um, uh, i mean a grass single simple grasshopper turns into a locust so that's a trigger hormonal change which occurs and uh, that's called as a gregarious phase so more than 27% rise happens in their body and uh, they become like uh, giants and they start to moving right from africa to indian region so that's the uh, kilometers they would travel together and they would reach india so every year they reach jodhpur uh, and gujarat regions and uh, then uh, they are trying to control them and that region so this year unfortunately they started moving ahead and uh, we could uh, see the presence so there is one concept called as invasive insects in india 
so that's a big story because most of uh, the invasive species have come from abroad they have stayed here they have established they have multiplied and now they are on the high because uh, and that especially in the agricultural areas we'll see this kind of a situation so like uh, what corona has done havoc so similarly there is forecast that if we really don't study or don't understand the insect life so this is the future uh, what is going to happen for uh, epidemics in insect uh, populations especially the agriculture ones uh, now very quickly i am taking you around with uh, for the um, security people so they will be seeing all these uh, insect species जेवड़े सिक्युरिटी वाले हैं पे जर इन्सेक्ट्स बगुन तुम्हारा जे जे दिखाई नाव लक्षा रही कि वॉट एवर हाउ हाउ यू कैन कंट्रोल आई मीन अंडरस्टैंड देम बेसिकली सो हियर आर सम ऑफ द वेरी कॉमन इन्सेक्ट्स विच वी सी दीज आर दिस इज कॉल्ड क्रिकेट द ब्लैक वन इज अ क्रिकेट दिन यू हेव ग्रास ऑपर दिस कम ऑल अंडर वन पर्टिक्युलर ग्रुप कॉल्ड आर्थोप्टेरा देन यू कैन सी सो मेनी डिफरंट काइंड ऑफ बग्स so there will be sting bugs true bugs assassin bugs kissing bugs so many bugs so they are also friendly so then you have um, these all are pest so there are aphids scales mill bugs so which are very commonly known to us so you'll find them on the campus so one what i could do is uh, we can create a small some kind of a uh, uh, app or something where uh, everyone can just push on or load a lot of photographs on it and we'll identify what it is and where it was found so something like this we can have our own database of insects so you can call it as an insect bank so this is our coleoptera this is uh, all beetles actually and uh, you can see so many beetles so out of the 70% of the total insect world 30% are beetles so again that's a huge number for beetles then you have butterflies and moths So you can see a wonderful, so many varieties, so many things are you know uh, beautifully they have been uh, placed, and everyone has his own job to do. Then you have neuropterans who are doing this job. You can see this kind of a uh, traps that are called as a dead trap or ant traps, or they are called as ant lions who would kill the ants. Then you have know, isopteras. These are all termites. So during the first showers, you will find a lot of termites coming out. so that's the place where you'll find uh, the yearly that's a period i mean once in a year they would come out then you'll see those two 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 i mean a pair of uh, insects moving together they'll drop their wings and that's going to be the future queen so you can imagine the the size of a queen is the size of a cucumber and the head is like a mustard so that's the size of a queen and every second she lays lay one egg so every 15 second there's one egg so continuously you can imagine for next 15 years she'll do she'll just keep on laying eggs so you can imagine the amount of workers which are coming and they would uh, do their job now termites are bad for us because they enter inside our furnitures but they are best people who would convert the dead cellulose into soil and that's the beauty and that's the fastest quickest live machine who does this job because no one nothing else can convert cellulose so fast so with this uh, short summary we can have some questions before we uh, sign off so i hope you have enjoyed this small session and there's uh, much much more to understand much much more to learn and uh, so you can have some questions <laughs> rahul sir this is completely mind boggling world and uh, i know students must be having lots and lots many questions we will start with the chat box uh, so can you uh, just go through the chat box and uh, uh, let's go to the start yes so disha is saying sir why are some people more susceptible to bites and uh, are there specific things about those humans that attract mosquitoes I yeah i just told Yeah, yeah, you had told about. Right, right. So, sir, I think she asked before you explained it. Okay, 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 fine. Then Dolly uh, says, uh, "Sir, how did we get to know that BC?" Okay, there is something called as an uh, technology called anten uh, antenogram. So, what we do is we chop off the antennas and then introduce the electrodes, uh, platinum electrodes inside their antennas, and then uh, we show a couple of colors and a lot of things. and there's an interpretation uh, based on the responses which uh, they give 
uh, which can tell us about the composite colors or which is the pattern. So we have done it for bees, we have done it for cockroaches, and uh, cockroaches love angles, angles and uh, dark colors. So, you know, for based on this, we can find out uh, what is the likeness of an insect and for what particular this thing. So if I, uh, if I show a Shah Rukh Khan picture to a bee, so she won't respond. <laughs> Because uh, that's the interpretation, interpretation. So we need a good amount of studies uh, uh, can be done in that way. So that's basically an antinogram. It is done. I think we have, sir, would you throw some light on my uh, my creation measures of locust? So just now I just spoke about the locust uh, also uh, because as I told you, the every year they come till India and especially in Rajasthan and uh, Gujarat areas. But this year, because of the low pressure created in West Bengal earlier, uh, they were pulled. Now, uh, the, the locust movement is based on the uh, uh, climatic movements and uh, uh, winds which blow or the uh, atmosphere. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, temperature and uh, wind conditions uh, matter much for these locusts. So, the, this year, they have entered inside. But I am still uh, have a question whether uh, people have really seen locust in different places in uh, Madhya Pradesh or Maharashtra or somewhere. So because there are so many um, videos which were viral, but uh, I am still uh, not so confident about whether they have really reached these places. Sir, actually, I live in Madhya Pradesh, so I I also saw like uh, more than usual they were. Locust. Right, right. But uh, whether they were uh, locust or uh, this was the first time we have seen a locust, or whether it was a grasshopper. Sir, they were very heavy. Uh, actually, I saw in while driving through uh, these jungles areas, I saw like there were many this time. Okay, because there is one uh, person. Uh, I mean, I have seen. I have uh, you know uh, the video which had come or the uh, this thing uh, from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, are you speaking about the same video which was uh, next to the road and uh, the uh, locust were uh, you know in the in the farm next to the uh, you know tar road and the driver was moving he no, was honking no something. sir actually i'm i'm telling about myself i don't i've not seen any video in Madhya Pradesh. I, I, okay you, you have seen uh, with your own eyes wonderful yeah. so that means pradesh okay so now uh, i'll tell you next two years you have to warn the farmers because they are going to have a help because of the uh, grasshoppers now coming on. Because from locusts, the, the phase is going to change to a grasshopper. So next two years, uh, farmers are going to face a problem for locusts, uh, grasshoppers. So we need to warn the farmers there. Okay, next two years, you are going to have a lot of grasshoppers coming on. So you have to be on a watch. So how are wasps able to control over insects in airport? Okay, so this wasp is something uh, fantastic that uh, this wasp will go and lay her egg inside the egg of a uh, butterfly or a moth. And so that will control, um, uh, it's a natural process which occurs uh, normally in the nature. So same thing, we are just providing it there. So that's why uh, the wasp will go and lay egg inside the egg of a uh, caterpillar or the butterfly or the moth. So you don't have the caterpillars or the moths coming out and that would reduce the food waste. So that's how it works. So similarly, yes, uh, very much it can be used in farms because I started working for farmers, but unfortunately that farmers are not so keen on going ahead with all these biocontrol measures. Uh, they are more keen on using pesticides. That's why uh, I shifted my uh, entire business to uh, Air Force. <laughs> So this is a, this technology can be used to fantastic in farms. Of course, there are a few farmers who are working with us, and uh, we uh, share, we supply, give them a lot of um, uh, you know this kind of a biocontrol uh, methods, and they are doing fantastic farming. I will never not kill a mosquito. Wonderful! Don't kill a mosquito. <laughs> it didn't survive. <laughs> So what was the question, Harish? I don't know what you uh, wanted to say. Uh, no, it's okay. There were some comments. So you can yeah. go directly to the Samya Sharan. How can we differentiate between bees, wasps and hornets, especially in emergency situation where you may or may not get stung? 
uh, it's slightly difficult to differentiate actually unless you see it because the bees wasps and hornets everyone has a typical uh, sting pattern because they would lay the um, uh, you know the uh, sting inside our uh, body so um, uh, unless uh, if you have uh, the bee or the wasp in front of you it is very easy to identify but uh, if it is stung and it is you are uh, you don't have that insect in your hand then it is slightly difficult if you compare um, uh, the response the bees wasp or hornet slightly uh, i would put it as hornets would be the one to be uh, under, you know uh, immediately taken care of first second is the wasp and third is the bee but uh, again it uh, depends on the responses every humans would have because uh, that perception is different because uh, for, uh, for bee stings me uh, for me is nothing but uh, for bee stings uh, someone else so he may respond it totally different because of depending on its uh, physiology so we want you know the uh, wasp will murder you okay okay fine how would the wasp would do so it was as i told you they, these all have a typical sting uh, which will come out and uh, so uh, normally uh, see they get uh, totally agitated because of the uh, uh, ammonia which is re uh, re uh, released from our body so it's a typical uh, you know the fear which comes uh, uh, in us and the fear will immediately release uh, the uh, you know the scent which uh, our body would give and uh, they get agitated because of the ammonia which is present in our body or the uh, ammonia which give which is given out that's why you will find the dogs would also by uh, bark at us they will start coming on us towards us once a person is uh, is uh, you know uh, once a person fears so that's particular the fear factor which attracts these and they would immediately sting you so if you are very uh, calm and quiet and you uh, go, go very close to the hive they won't do anything to you but the moment you are scared and start perspiring so that is a trigger for them they will uh, uh, directly pounce on you and they will start stinging so that we have to be very uh, careful that uh, if if at all a wasp or a hornet or a bee sits on your body make sure that you don't fear and uh, just very carefully just pick it up with a paper or something and you can throw it out but the moment you are scared you try to smash it try to uh, you know throw it outside with uh, bare hands or you try to you know, do it, uh, do some kind of an activity which is unpleasant for them immediately you will get a sting from them so that's the way you can just protect so normally the moment you are in fear you are going to have it okay so sir i think they uh, these are the questions all other are just comments so i would ask right. students if they want to ask any question uh, they can uh, go ahead hello sir yeah yeah you told about the wasp controlling the insects and all but uh, how do you ensure that the wasp are uh, like they remain in the same place of interest like airports and air bases yeah as they long as Uh, as long as they have food they are going to stay there as long as they don't have food they are going to die or they will move out say so that's the uh, natural uh, tendency so uh, so i am not worried about uh, where they go i am uh, my the first concern was whether the population has come down <laughs> so that that's all so the, uh, if i send uh, if i uh, from a farmers end there's a FAQ. The first question comes when I release my neighbor is going to get benefited. So that's a human tendency. <laughs> so so the so they ask these questions. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Any more questions or uh, this is my contact? And Sir, regarding the insects become hungrier now due to climate yeah. change. Uh, Uh, can you please explain that a bit more yeah see the insect life cycle is totally dependent on uh, temperature and humidity so globally uh, is the same story that uh, insect development is based on the temperature and humidity conditions now if the temperatures are rising so they have to finish their life cycle very fast very quickly now for example a particular insect has a life cycle of say 15 days so now it would come to 14 days 13 days 12 days and within 10 days it would 
complete its life cycle because the temperature uh, because it's more of temperature dependent so if it has to complete the life cycle it has to feed so it has to complete those stages so immediately it starts feeding quickly and it will take consume more i mean not uh, not like a i mean uh, it won't go like a giant but uh, it it would surely uh, on regular basis yeah available whatever the food is available it will start uh, consuming it more and uh, try to finish its life cycle quickly that's why there that's a alarm from uh, you know globally there's an alarm that because of the rise in temperature so you are going to face this issue of uh, you know the insects are going to consume more amount of uh, or quickly that's more in the sense faster uh, they are going to eat whatever the available food sources so according to you what is the best way to counter this bring the temperature what do you down. prefer <laughs> uh, the climatic change so we have to address the uh, temperature conditions globally so it's not just one place so i cannot have a air condition for entire pune city just to bring the temperature of pune city down but uh, yes. it's happen globally so we need to work on uh, area wide uh, systems and that's really when to so presently if you see what is the uh, average temperature of pune has gone beyond 30 so earlier it was 25 20 25 so uh, in a couple of years it has changed so drastically as i remember my childhood the temperatures were 25 22 and we used to be very happy but now it is 30 so there is a sudden shift in uh, so just a matter of say 40 years so yeah even the seasons are changing this is changing right so in october i am getting rains so today and uh, it's prediction that next uh, till november you are going to get rains so I, i mean in diwali we never had rains now this diwali until november we would have rains so we are shifting uh, towards the tropical kind of a climate that is is going to be uh, really worrying from point of view of insect life i mean insects will be happy but uh, we won't be happy <laughs> we won't be so much happy okay so sir thank you yeah there is one question in the chat box how do you prevent the wasp from being an invasive species isn't it a manipulation of natural balance of ecology of the place uh no at all not at all because uh, whenever i do this activity first thing is i do the survey because that's the major thing we uh, understand what the diversity is and then only we need to introduce a fixed amount of wasp over there so it's not just a, a play or something that okay man mein aaya chhod diya aisa nahi so we need to really work on that so every year programs are we have to design the release programs and accordingly it has been done because when i uh, tell them it is a, a scheduled activity because the entire air force uh, teams are involved in that so it's not just a matter of just playing here and there so it's a very serious activity uh, needs to be taken up because uh, because uh, the air force accepting this itself is something very different because uh, they will not accept it so easily <laughs> because that's an indian air force so because they are not going to risk the entire uh, flight or the uh, fighter just for all this uh, you know small things so they make sure that everything is being thrashed out every small thing we have uh, considered and then only this activity is uh, being done so of course it's a very learned activity it's not just a uh, illiterate activity okay, okay i guess uh, uh, we can stop here and uh, if any other, uh, other questions students you have uh you can uh, take sir's email id also you can directly uh, email him and we are also sending feedback form to you all and uh, you can uh, write your questions in the chat uh, in the suggestion box also and i can get it answered from the sir also uh, as you see uh, I mean uh, saw just now this uh, whole subject is quite vast and this is just a preliminary introductory lecture those who are interested in specific uh, again uh, you know insects in some are interested in beetles some are interested in grasshoppers or you know uh, termites so you can send your uh, interest in again suggestions uh, in your feedback forms and we'll be 
having rahul marathe sir and in even other uh, entomologist talking to you on those you know specific uh, insects uh, in detail uh, in near future say in december and jan we will be having the second part of all the sessions which we are doing right now so this is a very basic uh, introductory lecture so yes with this uh, i thank you rahul sir and i'll ask uh, prashant to take it over and uh, go ahead yeah, just before that Uh, if people are interested they can do projects with me because there are so many students who come and do projects with me so i am open to uh, students uh, it's not that only science student ca can come uh, it's it's across uh, the uh, streams students can come and do projects uh, with uh, i mean uh, it's an integrated kind of a project thank you please continue sir. thank you very much ma'am it was a really very informative session i i will call sumok to give a vote of thanks to sir uh, yeah sure prashant can you please check if i am audible and visible uh, yes sumok you are yeah, yeah. audible also yeah well uh, i extend a really hearty vote of thanks to mr rahul marathe sir uh, for such a wonderful and fascinating session on entomology i would also like to thank shilpa ma'am for giving us an opportunity to organize such session and our beloved audience to uh, join this session on the sunday afternoon yeah and we got to learn a lot of new things a lot of new interesting facts about mosquitoes honey bees grasshoppers and all those insects and apart from this uh, uh, insects are not meant to be killed we learn from the session that insects are not meant to be killed they are meant to be preserved we can uh, get, learn a lot of things from the insects and we can I use insects in various other sectors such as defense technology clothing and all those things and one thing we got to learn from this session is insects uh, are uh, necessary for to maintain the ecological balance of the environment and yeah uh, 